Justice was the fourth Archbishop of Canterbury. He was sent from Italy to England by Pope Gregory the Great, on a mission to Christianize the Anglo-Saxons from their native paganism, probably arriving with the second group of missionaries dispatched in 601. Justice became the first Bishop of Rochester in 604, and attended a church council in Paris in 614. Following the death of King Ethelbert of Kent in 616, Justice was forced to flee to Gaul, but was reinstated in his diocese the following year. In 624 Justice became Archbishop of Canterbury, overseeing the dispatch of missionaries to Northumbria. After his death he was revered as a saint, and had a shrine in St. Augustine's Abbey, Canterbury. Arrival in Britain Justice was an Italian and a member of the Gregorian mission sent to England by Pope Gregory I. Almost everything known about Justice in his career is derived from the early 8th century Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum of Bede. As B does not describe Justice origins, nothing is known about him prior to his arrival in England. He probably arrived in England with the second group of missionaries, sent at the request of Augustine of Canterbury in 601. Some modern writers describe Justice as one of the original missionaries who arrived with Augustine in 597, but Bede believed that Justice came in the second group. The second group included Miletus, who later became Bishop of London and Archbishop of Canterbury. If Justice was a member of the second group of missionaries, then he arrived with a gift of books and all things which were needed for worship and the ministry of the church. A 15th-century Canterbury chronicler, Thomas of Elnham, claimed that there were a number of books brought to England by that second group still at Canterbury in his day, although he did not identify them. An investigation of extant Canterbury manuscripts shows that one possible survivor is the saint. Augustan Gospels, now in Cambridge, Corpus Christi College, Manuscript 286. Bishop of Rochester. Augustine consecrated justice as a bishop in 604, over a province including the Kentish town of Rochester. The historian Nicholas Brooks argues that the choice of Rochester was probably not because it had been a Roman-era bishopric, but rather because of its importance in the politics of the time. Although the town was small, with just one street, it was at the junction of Watling Street and the estuary of the Medway, and was thus a fortified town. Because Justice was probably not a monk, his cathedral clergy was very likely non-monastic too. A charter purporting to be from King Ethelbert, dated 28 April 604, survives in the Textus Refensis, as well as a copy based on the Textus in the 14th century Liber Temporalium, written mostly in Latin but using an old English boundary clause. The charter records a grant of land near the city of Rochester to Justice a church. Among the witnesses is Lawrence, Augustine's future successor, but not Augustine himself. The text turns to two different addressees. First, Ethelbert is made to admonish his son Eadbald, who had been established as a sub-ruler in the region of Rochester. The grant itself is addressed directly to St. Andrew, the patron saint of the church, a usage paralleled by other charters in the same archive. Historian Wilhelm Leverson, writing in 1946, was skeptical about the authenticity of this charter. In particular, he felt that the two separate addresses were incongruous and suggested that the first address, occurring before the preamble, may have been inserted by someone familiar with Bede to echo Eadbald's future conversion. A more recent and more positive appraisal by John Morris argues that the charter and its witness list are authentic because it incorporates titles and phraseology that had fallen out of use by 800. Ethelbert built Justice a cathedral church in Rochester, the foundations of a nave and chancel partly underneath the present-day Rochester Cathedral, May date from that time. What remains of the foundations of an early rectangular building near the southern part of the current cathedral might also be contemporary with 
Justice or may be part of a Roman building. Together with Miletus, the Bishop of London, Justice signed a letter written by Archbishop Lawrence of Canterbury to the Irish bishops urging the native church to adopt the Roman method of calculating the date of Easter. This letter also mentioned the fact that Irish missionaries, such as Dagon, had refused to share meals with the missionaries. Although the letter has not survived, Bede quoted from parts of it. In 614, Justice attended the Council of Paris, held by the Frankish king, Clotha II. It is unclear why Justice and Peter, the abbot of Sts Peter and Paul in Canterbury, were present. It may have been just chance. But historian James Campbell has suggested that Clotha summoned clergy from Britain to attend in an attempt to assert overlordship over Kent. The historian N. J. Hyam offers another explanation for their attendance, arguing that Ethelbet sent the pair to the council because of shifts in Frankish policy towards the Kentish kingdom, which threatened Kentish independence, and that the two clergymen were sent to negotiate a compromise with Clotha. A pagan backlash against Christianity followed Ethelbet's death in 616, forcing Justice and Miletus to flee to Gaul. The pair probably took refuge with Clotha, hoping that the Frankish king would intervene and restore them to their sees, and by 617 Justice had been reinstalled in his bishopric by the new king. Miletus also returned to England, but the prevailing pagan mood did not allow him to return to London. After Lawrence's death, Miletus became Archbishop of Canterbury. The historian J. M. Wallace Hadrill assumes that both letters were general statements of encouragement to the missionaries. Archbishop Justice became Archbishop of Canterbury in 624, receiving his pallium, the symbol of the jurisdiction entrusted to archbishops, from Pope Boniface V, following which Justice consecrated Romanus as his successor at Rochester. Boniface also gave Justice a letter congratulating him on the conversion of King Adjuluald, a letter which is included in Bede's Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum. Bede's account of Eadbald's conversion states that it was Lawrence, Justice a predecessor at Canterbury, who converted the king to Christianity. But the historian D. P. Kirkby argues that the letter's reference to Eadbald makes it likely that it was justice. Other historians, including Barbara York and Henry Meyer Harting, conclude that Bede's account is correct, and that Eadbald was converted by Lawrence. York argues that there were two kings of Kent during Eadbald's reign, Eadbald and Ethelwald, and that Ethelwald was the Adjuluald referred to by Boniface. York argues that Justice converted Ethelwald back to Christianity after Ethelbet's death. Justice consecrated Paulinus as the first bishop of York, before the latter accompanied Ethelberg of Kent to Northumbria for her marriage to King Edwin of Northumbria. Bede records Justice as having died on 10 November, but does not give a year, although it is likely to have between 627 and 631. After his death, Justice was regarded as a saint, and was given a feast day of 10 November. The 9th century Stowe Missal commemorates his feast day, along with Miletus and Lawrence. In the 1090s, his remains were translated, or ritually moved, to a shrine beside the high altar of St. Augustine's Abbey in Canterbury. At about the same time, a life was written about him by Gesellin of St. Bettine, as well as a poem by Reginald of Canterbury. Other material from Thomas of Elmham, Gervais of Canterbury, and William of Malmesbury, later medieval chroniclers, adds little to Bede's account of justice a life. Citations. Carrot Walsh New Dictionary p. 349. Carrot, Saint, Justice of Canterbury, Patron Saints Index, retrieved 3 November 2007. Carrot Hyam Convert Kings p. 94. Carrot ABCDEFGHI Hunt, Justice, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Carrot Stenton Anglo-Saxon England p. 109.
Carrot Hindley Brief History of the Anglo-Saxons p. 65. Carrot A.B. Blair World of Bede pp. 84-87. Carrot Wallace Hadrill Bede's Ecclesiastical History p. 43. Carrot A.B. Brooks, Miletus, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Carrot Bede History of the English Church and People p. 85-86. Carrot Meyer Hart Incoming of Christianity p. 62. Carrot Colgrave, Introduction, Earliest Life of Gregory the Great p. p. 27-28. Carrot Lapage Anglo-Saxon Library pp. 24-25. Carrot Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury p. 221. Carrot A.B. Brooks From British to English Christianity, Conversion and Colonization pp. 24-27. Carrot Smith Early Community of St. Andrew at Rochester English Historical Review p. 291. Carrot Smith, Early Community of St. Andrew at Rochester, English Historical Review, p. 292. Carrot Miller, New Registar Regum Manglorum, Sawyer 1. Carrot Campbell, Charters of Rochester, p. c. Carrot Morris, Arthurian Sources, Vol. E. p. 90. Carrot ABC Leveson England and the Continent pp. 223-225. Carrot Morris Arthurian Sources Vol. EPP. 97-98. Carrot Stenton Anglo-Saxon England p. 112. Carrot AB Higham Convert Kings pp. 138-139. Carrot Wood Mission of Augustine of Canterbury Speculum p. 7 Carrot Campbell First Century of Christianity Essays in Anglo-Saxon History p. 56 Carrot Higham Convert Kings p. 116 Carrot Lappage Miletus Blackwell Encyclopedia of Anglo-Saxon England Carrot Wallace Hadrill Bede's Ecclesiastical History pp. 64-65. Carrot A.B. Fried, A.L. Handbook of British Chronology p. 213. Carrot Kirby Earliest English Kings pp. 31-32. Carrot Kirby Earliest English Kings p. 33. Carrot Meyer Hart Incoming of Christianity pp. 75-76. Carrot York Kings and Kingdoms p. 32. Carrot Wallace Hadrill Bede's Ecclesiastical History p. 82. Carrot Delaney Dictionary of Saints pp. 354-355. Carrot Farmer Oxford Dictionary of Saints p. 366. Carrot Haywood Justice Blackwell Encyclopedia of Anglo-Saxon England.